Welcome and thanks for tuning in again. And if you are new to the channel, please make sure to be subscribed and hit the notification button so you get a notification whenever I post a new video about China investment, um, US China politics, which this video will be all about, but also a lot about the EV industry such as NIO and Tesla. And so just make sure you are subscribed. I see in the analytics that there are so, still some people not subscribed yet. And no matter if you're subscribed or not subscribed, please um, hit the like button. This helps the algorithm so more people are watching this video. So let's jump into it. Um, I've opened here this tweet that I've done a while ago. Um, BYD and CATL will run battery plants in the United States. They are made in America then and heavily subsidized by the Inflation Reduction Act um, in short, IRA, and NEO produces cars in China and ships them to the United States, can swap in a battery and boom, what you got is basically a Chinese made vehicle by NEO and well, you get some subsidies for these cars. So let's dive into this topic. Um, of course, the um, context here is that the US-China relations aren't the best, right? Um, the US wants its manufacturing back, its advanced technologies, kind of afraid about the fact that you know China's catching up and of course um, yeah there's kind of a, a new kind of nationalism evolving as well so against this backdrop it might be pretty hard for a company like NIO to enter the market which is um, yeah, pretty hostile right um, however we've seen here um, a, a picture that Li Bin the CEO of NIO is just in the United States currently so um, indicating that the uh, um, market entry plans are going at least according to plan, if not maybe even faster than initially. Um, we didn't have a, an exact date for the United States market entry, but I think there are a lot of potential buyers waiting for the cars. And um, we thought that, well, they prioritize uh, Europe first, right? But then um, at some point in time, of course, America makes sense as well. Again, for the context, China is by far the biggest electric vehicle market in the world. So that one is the most important one. Next is Europe. So that's also very important in terms of sales and also for Neo, um, in terms of branding as well, because that's where they are directly competing on the home turf of BMW, Audi, Mercedes and so on. And then next, what makes I think the US very uh, interesting right now is this next topic here about um, EV batteries, but also in general, um, what's uh, currently happening there with this um, Biden uh, policy of the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which not only gives, um, what is it, 7,500 um, US dollars for the purchase of an EV, but, and that's my main point, what I'm talking here, my tweet about the um, substantial incentives for companies to produce batteries domestically. So, uh, what happens is that the U.S. is actually, um, if there are batteries produced in America um, domestically, then they give uh, $35 um, per kilowatt hour produced and 10% per, per module. And this is massive. This is even as massive that um, Tesla, which I've covered extensively on the channel as well, with Giga Berlin here in Germany, they initially planned to make the battery production in Germany for the cars being produced there. But now they have already shipped the, the tools and manufacturing capabilities back to the United States um, after Biden came out with these policies. And it's basically kind of a little bit of a de-industrialization of Europe there because Europe is not competitive anymore by that. But in this relation between um, China and the US, it's quite interesting here um, that we also see, for example, now CATL in this case here partnering up with Ford Ford will have the, the main say in this um, wholly owned um, company. Um, so it's not a, a joint venture even, but CATL, they do have the, you know, all of the, the power of producing batteries. Uh, they are the biggest manufacturer in the world for that. They will be making batteries locally for Ford, but maybe even more than Ford, right? But the interesting part here is that they will get the heavily subsidized CATL batteries made in the United States. At least that's my understanding, right? And so back to NEO. Well, 
Neo is also working with CATL, right? This I, I covered also this on a channel that just pre um, very recently, actually, um, they were signing this um, agreement partnership um, corporation there. And part of it was actually also about going overseas, opening new markets, overseas business expansions and corporations in this regard. And as you know, CATL also is doing a battery plant, for example, in Germany. Um, and also has very close facilities to NEO in Hungary and also in the future um, in the United States. So what NEO here could te uh, technically do, that that's what I'm suggesting here with my tweet, um, NEO has a unique advantage, which is that they are separating the car, the, the actual vehicle, the platform from the battery, not only um, from like physically with the hardware, but also economically and um, let's say financially and from a legal perspective even. So you can actually um, legally kind of, you, you get a separate um, uh, a separate bill for the car uh, as well as for the battery in China. So this is how it really works. You, you rent the battery uh, via the battery as a service, um, battery asset management company via BAS. And in the future, of course, this might be available in the US too. Now here's the clue. Um, if NEO were to still produce their cars in, in China and ship them over to the US, um, they possibly would face, uh, first of all, of course, the large um, tariffs, um, but of course, they wouldn't get any of those subsidies for the battery parts, right? Um, so NEO is purchasing batteries from CATL, but also other providers. And NEO's role is um, they are, well, they're purchasing the battery cells, I should say, and then they are combining them in modules and uh, doing the whole battery pack. Uh, that's being done by NEO. So there is some sort of uh, vertical integration as well happening. But um, the important part here is that NEO's cars can actually be shipped without a battery inside or maybe just a dummy battery. And this could potentially heavily reduce the average price target or sales price, uh, the price tag of the car that is being imported on which NEO vehicles or NEO has actually to pay the import tariffs, right? Let's say if there is um, an $80,000 uh, car, um, if you remove the battery, it's only seventy thousand US dollars, and so you only have to pay the tariffs based on the, the lower price. So first of all, that's something that they can also forward to the consumer. But also, on top of that, for the battery itself, um, this would be heavily subsidized by the United States. And so this is one unique advantage that other um, companies simply don't have. For example, Xiaopeng, or even if Tesla should decide to. Well, that does make much sense because they have um, factories also in the United States. But if they would think about shipping cars from China where it's cheap to produce to the United States, then um, of course there is the issue that they cannot separate the battery from the vehicle, right? Um, or if they are doing so, then this might um, yeah, involve quite a bit of um, reworking that might be more expensive than actually, you know, um, yeah, getting those subsidies in the first place, right? So for Neo, they could really exploit that in a way, and that's going for and that's one possibility for um, the United States here, but maybe also for uh, Europe, a model in which similarly CATL might have um, a local production of the batteries in Europe, um, which may not be as heavily subsidized as the one in the United States, but it may help NEO to lower this import tariff price and thereby um, having a unique advantage against, for example, competitors, as I mentioned before. Also, there are other ways about those tariffs, um, for example, that the assembly is only happening actually at the, at, the par at, the, at the place where it's being imported. So Tesla has been doing that in the past. In, in, in the Netherlands, they have um, actually kind of started to assembly, uh, assemble the full car. So this is also a way of working around such tariffs. But for me, the main part is actually of being able of benefiting from this um, Inflation Reduction Act. And that's, and that's really one unique possibility here due to battery swapping that, in my views, and this is kind of a moonshot, let me know in the comments if you are... Um, seeing any hurdles or why this should not work. Uh, but, you know, this is my moonshot, why I think that this might be actually a interesting part of the CATL Neo Corporation that might be coming up. Also, of course, we always have the issue around what might be the partnership between 
CITL and Ford, but also NEO. We heard with the Ford CEO speaking about NEO in a very positive way in the past as well. What will be NEO's strategy of entering the United States? Uh, maybe they also even partner up with somebody like Ford, somebody who has excess um, capacities for building cars. Maybe they, they will do a similar model of localizing in the United States just to get around some of these uh, political issues there. You know, suddenly the car has kind of a semi made in American tag, at least for the batteries. Who knows, maybe they even bring the production of the car itself also closer to the United States. And that, I think, would help to reduce political tensions at the same time, benefit them um, to yeah, get such, such kind of subsidies, essentially. And on top of that, I think even the Americans should be happy about that because it will create local jobs. So that's the goal of the politicians and it's building up um, some part of the EV value chain and industry in the United States. And that could be ultimately a positive move by NEO and for the whole EV industry, my views between the US and China. Let me know your thoughts around it in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.